Well, hello. Hi. Um, I guess I'm alive. Does anybody know? Uh, I am so excited to be here. Um, as you can see, I'm in a train. I don't know where you are. Don't worry, this is a train with just me inside of it. I'm in my, I'm in a quarantine too, staying, staying inside. Uh, I'm very <clears throat> thrilled <clears throat> to announce uh, we have a very exciting, exciting uh, 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 music, musical interlude. Um, um, I'm, I'm just getting used to this being live and being alive. <laughs> I, um, you know, video transmission is as fast as lightning. And uh, speaking of lightning, I'm excited as a crackle of thunder to hear an outskirt, not an indoor skirt, an out, an outskirt. Now, outskirt is a storytelling outfit that I'm told draws on Filipino folklore, superstition, chant, ritual, and electronic sound worlds warped through the immigrant experience. Now, I don't know about you, but those are some of my favorite things. Uh, all right, well, I'll let an outskirt tell you a little bit more about the excerpt or not. It's up to them. All right. All aboard! Toot toot!
Well, I don't know about you, but I feel like I just had a meditative experience. That was wonderful, wonderful kind of a um, meditation, I think. I was very much enjoying that, and I'm sure you were too. An outskirt, not to be confused with an inside skirt, but an outskirt is a wonderful storytelling uh, uh, co collective and uh, uh, a storytelling outfit. Um, and they draw on Filipino folklore and uh, ritual chant superstition and certainly a, a kind of trippy experience for the viewer. Wonderful, just marvelous. Oh, I love learning. Um, I am old time a driver and I'm really excited to um, introduce. Oh, before I even introduce, I have to say an outskirt. Uh, uh, if you enjoyed that, you can follow an outskirt on Instagram <clears throat> and you can also tip them with your dollars and your pennies on Venmo and that's Joy Tomeo. And I think there was more that I was gonna say in a, in a highlighted document, but I, ooh, I don't know if I'm gonna find that just yet, but I was sure wanna say all the things I'm supposed to say. Now, let me see. I'm just gonna do a little clicking around and maybe I'll find a high highlighted portion or maybe not. And in that case, I'll just get back to you all about an outskirt. All right. Oh, uh, or maybe it could be in the in the other little chat, the any kind of highlighted information. Now, in the meantime, I would love to introduce my old friend, Kate Mo Hanty. Uh, Kate is gonna tickle the ivories on some saxophony keys. But Kate's gonna keep it real, I know. It might be a saxophony, but I know Kate's gonna keep it real. Uh, uh, so please join me in welcoming Kate. I can't wait to hear these tunes. Uh, all aboard.
I'm alive. Kate, that was wonderful. A, a round of snaps and applause for Kate. What a marvelous uh, musical interlude. Mm, mm, mm. This is old timey train driver here. I love to ride the rails and listen to all kinds of music. Now, Kate's most recent solo album is titled Disappear Here, which I am told I have it on a uh, 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 transit authority that it's streamable on all music platforms. 
I'm also told that it's streamable on train platforms too. So wonderful, wonderful tunes by Kate. Uh, now, for those of you that got to see an outskirts marvelous video, that was a that was called Night Breaks, which is an excerpt from an outskirts opera called Maga Station or The Stations. That's an opera structured as a series of vignettes where conversations on history and personal multinational clash, mix, and synthesize with immigrant experiences. That was wonderful. We heard that before. Kate's excellent tunes. Uh, uh, and that's, that's about what there is to say about that. So uh, while, while we, now I, I believe the transit authority is telling me that we don't really go live until 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, I don't know what time zone you're in, but I'm not in Eastern Standard Time. I'm in a unstandard time. I'm in a central, dislocated, not so standard, hybrid fitting time. Uh, uh, oh, well, why, thank you about my hat. That's mighty kindly of you. This hat was given to me by a wonderful human. Uh, and I, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Now, I believe we have to wait a few minutes to welcome everybody. So I can tell you a little bit about the train that I'm in. As you can see, there are some plush velvet seats. It appears as though the, um, the scenery is stationary, but I assure you, I'm chugging along. Woo, woo, we just rounded a band. Uh, so um, my guess is everybody is at home, but for me, this is my, my train home at the moment. And I'm, I'm staying inside as much as I can. And I go out and have a smoke break every now and then. Not that I smoke, just uh, like to take in fresh air. And uh, there we go. Um, if you're joining us, uh, those of you just clicking in, uh, we heard some wonderful, um, wonderful music by an outskirt as well as Kate. Mo Hanty, uh, who tickled those saxophony keys for us. And uh, uh, Kate's album, Disappear Here, as I said, is streamable on music platforms as well as train platforms. Um, so um, that's about it. Uh, any, any questions before we get started? I know uh, Twitch is a, a, a new platform for some of us and an old hat for others. So any kind of questions before we get started, I'm happy to attempt to answer them, but we'll see. I don't know. Mm. Hmm. Oh, my favorite destination. Well, that's a wonderful question. Let me think about that. My favorite destination is with friends. And right now I feel like I'm in wonderful company with some old friends and some new friends. And that sure is a wonderful feeling. I like to see the coasts and I like to see the middles and the insides too. So those are wonderful destinations. And I, you know, I would say I'm a, I'm a global citizen of the world. And so I like to, to, to toot around. Really any destination is a good one, but you know what they say, Teresa, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. So with that said, I, uh, oh, what sound does your train make? Well, I, that's an easy question. The Ma Maxi Pad the First. Oh my, what a name that is, Maxi Pad the First. Uh, my train makes a very simple sound. It goes toot toot. That's the sound of my train. So, uh, uh, Oh, my least favorite train snacks. Well, why would I li li list my least favorite when there are so many favorite train snacks to be had? I love a Dorito chip, and I've never met a Frito-Lay I don't like to say hello to. Also don't mind a mixed nut. Hazelnuts, on the other hand, is a vexing kind of a nut. It's a rich nut, 
but I, I, I like a hazelnut when it's in Nutella. Just uh, a raw hazelnut does tend to make the tongue a little bit itchy. So I, I try to avoid that. Oh, and I do like a hot dog, but not so much when I'm on a train, I have to say. And I like a slice of pizza, but not so much when I'm on a train. So the best thing about a train is you can bring a picnic. All right. Well, if you're joining us now, uh, it is uh, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I would love to say a hearty welcome to everybody. Uh, I am your uh, old time train driver, host of the evening. And if you are joining us just now, I have to say you missed a marvelous, marvelous pre-show. Now, don't you worry, that's the only FOMO of the evening that I'll be alluding to. I don't ever have FOMO because I am an old tiny train driver and I exist in all places all the time. I don't discriminate when it comes to fun. Well then, here we are at Out of an Abundance of Caution, an avant-garde micro festival of quick and dirty, fascinating works responding to and from the places and the people with whom we are selecting to shelter. And I do hope everyone's sheltering in place okay as best they can. I know these are tricky times, especially, especially for everyone. It seems as though everybody's got their own particular plight these days. So I just wanna say thanks to everybody for doing the best they can. All right, as your host, old timey train driver, I'm just here to buckle up and ride the train with everybody. Uh, uh, so, and I know we're on Twitch. Whoop. Yep. We're on Twitch. Whoop. Can you see my eye twitching? Whoop. Whoop. It's twitching. That means, <laughs> oh, I'm just joking around. That's because we're on the Twitch account. Now you can follow us on Twitch and you can get alerts when we go live. You can also join us in the chat during and after the show. And you can follow us on all of the social medias at Out of Caution. I am really thrilled about tonight. We have an eclectic and an electric lineup of performers and provocateurs this evening. And we encourage you to tip them generously, just like you do when you ride the train and wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, showcases go by bands, uh, monologists, whomever. And I know you all tip well on the train, so I encourage you to do so tonight. You can tip at our PayPal account at paypal.me out of caution. Uh, somebody will put that in the chat, I'm sure, or to a performer's personal Venmo. And we have those at the bottom of the screen as well. Uh, I already mentioned an outskirt. Their, um, their Venmo is at Joy Tomeo and Kate Mohanty. Also, I'm sure you can find Kate on social media somewhere. All right. Well, enough of my chitter chattering, Twitter twattering, Twitch and Mitcherin. Uh, we've got a very exciting first act. Itchy Richie. Woo! Can you scratch that itch? Woo! I'm getting itchy just thinking about it. Oh, wait, we're just on Twitch. Itchy Richie and the Burning Sensations is the uh, solo project of Fort Worth musician Richard Keller. Itchy makes alternative snaps. Crackling pops, pulling influence from rock, disco, and even new wave. Those are some of my favorite sonic genres. I don't know about you, but they're certainly some of my favorites. Well, I, as I believe we're ready to go for, for Itchy Richie. Is that right? Okie doke. Well, please give a hearty welcome to Itchy Richie from your corner of the train to mine, all aboard. Toot toot. Good evening, everyone. I'm Itchy Richie. I'm gonna play a couple of songs. I know it's basic, but you'll never hear it. These words I sing 
Det er barn, det er bils. It needs to be said How much I really care When you are down and I'm always here And I know this won't be your favorite song But it's straight from me to you And I know I put you on the spot And I don't expect your reply Hopeless and foolish I bear my heart to you But then I hide in melody It's hard to be open in this shut down world when everything is not what it seems. And I know this won't be your favorite song. And yeah, that's just from me to you. And I know I put you on the spot And I don't expect your reply I'll keep this brief For time is fleeting and I tend to ramble on Just know I love you Even in spite of myself I hope you don't disagree And I know this won't be your favorite song But it's straight from me to you And I know I put you on the spot And I don't expect your reply This is weird. Usually I hear people. But it's cool. It's the way we got to do things now, right? Uh, this next song is a mashup. It's one I wrote, and it's one Martin Gore wrote. I built this prison for myself. Bound by my boundless fantasy As the masses roll below me I sink into debris We take little solace In real life victories Living for the reward of thoughtless cruelties Words like violence Break the silence Come crashing in Into my little world Painful to me Six right through me. Can't you understand? Oh, my little girl, I'll ever wanted 
All ever needed is here in my arms. Words are very unnecessary. They can only do harm. Vows are spoken to be broken. Feelings are intense. Words are trivial. Pleasures remain. So does the pain. Words are meaningless and forgettable. All I ever wanted, all I ever needed is here in my heart. Words are very unnecessary. They can only do harm. Enough with the dark stuff and the slow stuff and the sad stuff. I said sad already, didn't I? Oh, whatever. This one's a little peppier. It starts off, you know, which is, as most good songs do, starts off a little sad, but it's an upbeat number, I assure you. You emptied your pockets. Cried yourself dry. You opened up your heart to watch it die on the vine. Your thoughts turned to darkness and unpleasant minds. The life you always wanted was a flash in the pan. And that's what you get. For all you try, and that's what you get. I think you find that's just the risk we take, the risk we take for love. Come on, don't be sad. The worst part of it's through. Give it time to heal and try again. It's not the end. It's beginning of something new. You'll make a mess again. Forgive me, it's true. And that's what you get for all your crying. That's what you get. But I think you're fine. That's just the risk we take. The risk we take for love. Come on now. You've been here before. You know in your heart, you'll do it again. So come on, come on, come on, let's do it again. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what you get. For all your dreaming, that's what you get. Gambling hearts, that's just the risk we take. The risk we take for love. That's just the risk we take for love. The risk we take for love. That's just the risk we take for love. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Well, wonderful, wonderful. Does, every, does anybody else feel like that they have scabies? Because I'm just itching all over from Itchy Richie. That was just stupendous. Uh, all I ever wanted, all I ever needed was Itchy Richie in my life over Twitch. Uh, really, really terrific stuff. Now, I failed to mention the order of events this evening, so I do apologize. We just had a wonderful uh, uh, first act from Itchy Richie. We'll have Faria Khan up next. Then we'll follow by Allison Teresa Fowler. Allison Fowler, Allison Teresa. Uh, then 
we'll have a short piece from Scott Adkins, a video. Then we'll have Oka Lai uh, hosting a family dinner, which I'm real excited about. And then we'll be closing it out with Maya Sharp. Really an excellent evening of artists and human beings. So, so tip them well. As you can see, I'm in a different train now. I fooled you. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Oh, now about that tipping, you can tip Itchy Richie at <laughs> IRATBS. It'll be, it'll be Fort Worth it. I say that because Itchy Richie is located in Fort Worth, Texas. Ka-ching! Mm. Kind of like the sound of a token in my train token box. That, that, those were the days. Mm, all right. Let's see. Who likes to laugh? You do? Me too. Uh, next up, we're going to be hearing from Faria Khan. Faria is a comedian based in Brooklyn. She performs all over New York when she's allowed to, when there's not a quarantine. And she's also been on Adult Swim and MTV. How do? I'm not much of a swimmer, but I do like to splash around in an old timey bathtub in an old timey bathing suit. Any of you have a particular swim stroke you like? I'm getting off the track. The train track, that is. Let's welcome Faria. All aboard. Toot toot. Okay, and one, two, three, four. Quarantine makes me feel fine. Living and having life, but just doing it inside. Quarantine reminds me of when I was 12 and I didn't have friends yet, so I just stayed inside and played the sims. Oh, one summer my brother and I watched every episode of Nanny Friend on reruns. On reruns. I don't think we were the target audience. I was 12 and he was 8, but I related to how Nanny Fran was an outsider because she had a weird ass voice. She had a weird voice I could understand. Ooh. A lady on Twitter says that Shakespeare wrote his best works during the Black Death. What's going on with Shakespeare? Is he a fucking freak for that? What's it, how you write your best work when thousands of people around here are dying? Um, unless you're a genius. Shakespeare was a genius, but I find it hard to work on my pilot screenplay when we're in a global pandemic and the economy is crashing around us. How did this virus start? Apparently the Chinese government let wild animals into the wet market. Uh, okay, what are they? Addicted to moisture? <laughs> so, okay.
it is really weird. Okay. Awesome stuff. All right. Quarantine. That <laughs> makes me feel fun. You know what I'm talking about? Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, my name is Faria, um, as was mentioned, and I am a comedian, if you can believe it. In these times, in this economy, <laughs> what's going on there? Uh, something, indeed, probably mentally. So um, now what we're going to do here is I have prepared um, some headline topical jokes, okay? As we know, it's a classic comedy move. Uh, if you guys have been watching the late night shows, that's what they've been doing forever. So I just thought I'd dive right in and prepare some of my own late night jokes. So here we go. This is, uh, this is our first take. Quarantine is crazy, huh? <laughs> what is this, the Black Plague? Um, no, but in all seriousness, this disease is truly devastating. Doctors have described it her as horrific, even out of um, a horror movie, perhaps. So. so, All right, so that's the first joke. Okay, how about this one? What's going on with Trump? Is this guy asleep? Huh? <laughs> Not, that one's probably never been made. I think that's a pretty original take on Trump. Dangerous to our society, huh? Okay. Um, here we go. Okay, this is going to crush. This is going to do really well. I recently saw a factoid that said that more millionaires were created during the Great Depression than any other time in U.S. history. Then in the 2008 stock market crash, another wave of millionaires was created. So I guess my middle school bully was wrong. Uh, the system is absolutely taking advantage of us. Okay. Brian Volkman. All right. <clears throat> so here we go. Let's close it out really strong on the headline jokes. Um, okay. 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 Here we go. There's currently more people filing for unemployment than any other time in the history of this country. And Republicans decided the best thing to do for that was to send a one-time check for $1,200. All right, so that's actually just real. So, okay. So that is not really a punchline because that's actually real. So that's what they thought would be a good idea. Okay, um, so that was that. So that we did the song and then we did the headline jokes. So I was just going to go ahead and hit y'all with some impressions really quick. I will say it's so weird to do comedy without um, an audience, because otherwise you could just be a, kind of a sad loser sitting at your computer. It's, that's the thin line that people don't talk about with comedy. Okay, so this is, here we go. So here's some impressions for you. Okay, this is an Australian woman who's really into conspiracy theories. 9-11 was an inside job. All right, so that's that one. Here's another one coming at you fast. Brene Brown is my favorite comedian. That, that's an impression of me failing to connect with my peers uh, due to a fundamental misunderstanding of what a comedian is. So, Okay, <clears throat> here we go. This is the last one here. Hello, sharks. I would like an endless amount of money due to the financial collapse of the gig economy. Um, that's me in about uh, two to three months, God willing. I just my tank. I hope I can get on, and that would really probably turn everything around for me on a personal level. Sure. Okay. Um, here we go. <laughs> so I was just gonna kind of close out on this. Um, you know, because of the quarantine, I haven't been able to do stand-up for a while. Uh, that's normally the thing I like to do. Um, so I was thinking that I'm going to just try to do a couple of jokes for you on uh, the screen. And, well, lightly strumming guitar, if you can believe it. And then we'll just sort of see how that feels for us emotionally. And then uh, that'll be that. Do you guys believe in God or kind of what's up? Okay, well, I really want to believe in God so bad. I, I just want to believe there's something bigger going on out there besides me taking a shit and getting a little bit on my hands by accident. Um, 
Okay, so um, but it's hard to believe with God with everything that's going on in the world right now. You know what I mean? For example, the other day I was walking down the street, right, as we do, and I was swinging my arms, you know, in this goddamn economy, I was trying to get somewhere, and then this guy walks up behind me, and then I cup his dick and balls, you know, so where was God? Not there at that moment. Um, okay, so, you know, I'm actually not that religious, I'm, I'm a bit more spiritual, not sure if y'all have ever heard anything quite like that, my dad does not understand me, um, he says I'm lazy, but I think I'm just chill, um, but I will say I'm searching for spirituality, so, um, I, of course, have created a belief system based on stuff I found on the internet. So what we're looking at is astrology memes have taught me that um, I am an Aquarius rising, Cancer moon, and a rampant Marxist. Um, I am very active on a Reddit thread where I discuss the uh, existence and therefore validity of soulmates. And I just got into something called intuitive gardening that I really think is going to turn everything around. All right, guys. Well, that was an interesting ride, a, a comedic ride. Thank you so much to the show for having me and enjoy the rest of the show. Well, that was wonderful. Thank you so much, Faria. Oh, that was, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry at some of that, but I know, oh my goodness. I don't know about you all, but sometimes I feel like I need comedy these days. Now more than weather. And the sun was shining today. What, what kind of weather was it like in your location? As you can see, I'm in a new train. I fooled you again. Now, Faria did mention uh, Marxism, and I do uh, want to say that earlier I, I, I mentioned uh, ka-ching, the sound of a token in my train token box, but don't be fooled, I am not a capitalist. In my day, a dollar cost a penny. Anyway, sometimes when I ride the rails, I can go off on a little side trail. Ever do that? Nothing like riding a train in a dark tunnel and then hurtling out into the daytime sunshine at 75 miles an hour. Sometimes I imagine that's what it'll feel like when quarantine is over. Me? I've been in many quarantines in my life, uh, but I'll tell you all about that later. In the meantime, uh, you, can, you can tip Faria uh, uh, check Faria out at Faria Khan uh, on Instagram. You can also Venmo Faria. F no, Faria's Instagram is Farizi. That's with four letter E's. Farizi. And also Faria is on Venmo at Faria Khan. Okay. Next up, we have a very exciting guest. Allison Teresa is a writer and collage creator who makes work that's uh, in the in-between seasons of life. You know, in Italy, they say, non ci sono più i mezzi stagioni. There are no longer the middle seasons like spring and fall. That's because of climate change. Well, Ter Alice and Teresa does work about the subtle parts of identity creation and anything that happens on the internet. I don't know about you, but those are some of my favorite things. Allison says she feels a lot of feelings and publishes most of them on her website, AllisonTeresa.com. How do? Uh, I believe we're going to get two selections from Allison this evening. Sounds to me like double trouble. 
I, I can't wait. Well, all aboard. Toot, toot. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me in my corner of quarantine. Uh, you're going to be seeing two pieces from me. The first one is from a collection of work that is called Daughter of a Mother. The full work is going to be out on May 10th. You can get updates on that on my website. And I'll be reading the introduction and first essay. So pull up your imaginary carpet square and give me a listen. Sometimes I think that I read too many books about daughters with no mothers. In the narrative of myself that I've been writing and rewriting since I can remember, my own mother never fits nicely. She's too prickly, too particular, too present for a heroine to really find herself. Of course, this isn't a problem with my mom, but a problem with how we think about a mother's place in a daughter's sense of self. It is either that mothers are evil or completely absent. But what of those mothers who are always around? Of those daughters who are like them and also not like them? Of the shared and separate selves that bind them together? The following are writings about the space needed to grow a body, the ends of things we've known since the beginning, and how we wade in the boundaries between our mothers and ourselves to create an identity. It is a summer day in the late 90s, and my teeth are still stained from fun dip. I look up at the surface of the pool from its bottom. The afternoon sun glitters in fragments. I feel lighter in the water, like the chlorinated blue is holding me up from every angle, touching my skin all at once. I come up for air and swim to the edge of the shallow end. I've been swimming for hours, there are only a few other kids in the pool. One is my brother, six years old to my nine, and none seem too interested in my solo water wandering. The sun has made its way from the street side to the alley side of the pool, and I'm getting tired. I set my elbows on the curved edge and spot the lounge chair with my towel from the water. The one next to it, along with the rainbow mesh bag and a tumbler of ice and Dr. Pepper, is gone. A panic creeps up my throat like I swallowed pool water through my belly button. I spin around looking for my mom. I need her to take me home to fix me something to eat. I need her to put drops in my ears so the water will run out. I need her in view before the panic turns to tears. The water around me follows my lazy movements, my, the, my movements lazily, as my eyes make frantic sweeps of the area. I find her tanned body laid out on the other side of the pool. The air around me instantly takes on a coconut oil scent and I can breathe again. I duck my head underwater and swim, swim, swim until I feel the other edge of the pool with my wrinkled fingertips. I climb out and lie next to her on the hot concrete to dry without my towel. I want her to comb my hair with a watered down detangler spray, to call my mother to I'm prime brother to go home, to wrap me up in her sun-baked arms. But I don't ask for these things. I am content next to her. When I'm around my mother now, I always feel like I am swimming. There is a feeling of effort, of movement, of resistance. Swimming is both pushing off of the water and pushing through it. There is a sense of having left the shallow end my childhood, and an idea that if I can keep swimming, I'll make it to the other side, to adulthood where she has moved herself. I want desperately to reach this other side, to get to be an adult with my mother, to enjoy her love and care without wanting to travel back to the warm concrete and ask her to hold me. But for now, I am still swimming. The pool in my mind is the distance between boundaries, the space between child and adult, between mother and daughter, between self and other. To understand the difference between mother and daughter, or to learn what one's self is in relationship to another, or to move from child to adult, 
requires a coordinated effort of kicks and held breath. This collection lives inside the inherent tension in maturing from a girl to a woman in the blessing and shadow of a present mother. I'm imagining a lot of applause and MacArthur grants just being thrown at me, so insert those here. Um, the next piece is something that is a little more um, current, uh, something that I worked up recently, and I'm gonna be getting some storytelling help on this one. Enjoy. Hello, boys and girls. This is your storyteller. When you hear this sound, turn the page. Now let's begin our story. Every time I get a hold of a thought, it flutters away. I feel like a tree who's losing her leaves. Sure, they've been dead for a while, the leaves being attachment to all those things that have proved useless these days capitalism, approval, control, but the feeling of letting them go, or really of them letting go of me, is a snap, a separation, a severance, an avalanche. I feel naked and bare, unburdened, yes, but thoroughly exposed. And while people keep pointing out the promise of spring, all I can muster to feel at the moment is a visceral chill setting in. Everyone on the internet is scrambling to explain why we feel so lousy. Unprecedented times, collective trauma, institutional failures, fear of the unknown, loss of control. But it's all of that and more than that. My thoughts keep circling around the fact that I am being confronted by the limits of human knowledge. This happens quietly all the time in first attempts, in labs, even without a pandemic, in art if you're lucky, in youth by design. But this limit of knowledge is eerie to me because people keep promising that a critical expansion of what we know, a vaccine, an anti-isolation, a return to normal, is just beyond our periphery. It doesn't matter if this is the truth or if it is a lie, I see now exactly where this corner of the unknown begins. I've been listening to a lot of guided meditations lately. When I, get the, when I get to that point in the day when I can't seem to do anything, I find one of those 15 minutes to total relaxation and enlightenment videos, unroll my indul indulgence purchase of a yoga mat and lay on the floor. A voice unfamiliar and monotone leads me through visualizations. Take a deep breath in. Let it out through your mouth. You are walking down a wood path. But I often fall asleep there lying flat on the floor and drift into a daydream. The dream goes like this. I am walking through thick woods on a dirt path. I get the sense that I've been walking for a while because when I look in front of me and behind me, all I see is more path and wood. I remember that I started walking this way following a vague promise of a place where my friends aren't in pain, where my family doesn't vote Republican, where we don't use the word worth to describe human value. It is a solitary road, but others have taken it before. The smooth dirt under me is evidence of their footsteps. This early point is where I almost wake up, where I get the feeling that the trees around me the sounds I can't make out, the tickle of fear is just a dream. But something propels me forward, like a ring from those old read-along books. I turn the page, I stay in the dream, I continue to walk. I continue to walk, but the fear swells. I hear a rustling in the woods around me, voices telling each other, run. I stop in my tracks, the path ahead has thinned out to the width of one foot. In three more steps, it fades completely into brush. I can't tell from which direction the sounds are coming from. I decide to walk in the opposite direction, hoping that I can still make it back to that home I left. I am running now. I can finally see familiar structures, lights on inside homes, buildings filled with people I love but left behind. But then I hear a scream. 
There is a ripple of echoes. People stream out of their houses towards me and the wood. Above us, toppling over us, blanketing us, is an avalanche. I turn back around and sprint down my dirt path. I am running. There are thousands of us in these woods now. I am running, coming again to the part in the path that thins out. Where am I supposed to go? Where was I going in the first place? I barrel through the grasses and the thistles prickle my ankles. I come to right where the trail disappears completely into the unknown, running full speed. I open my eyes and remember that it was a dream, a visualization that got away from me, a kind of sick concoction from my subconscious, trying to find the right metaphor for the moment. I pop out the headphones that are now making my ears ache and stand at my window. I have moved so little in the last month, but I am exhausted from running. There is so much life outside my window these days. Robins are making a nest in the crook of a tree. A cardinal visits each day. Chickadees flutter in the bamboo my landlord planted and forgot about. I read somewhere that people are typing, are birds louder? into Google more often than ever. It is funny, in the way that anything is funny right now, that the seasons are one step ahead of us. The earth has decided to bloom, that it is safe enough to bud and blossom. We open the windows often. I love the way the outside air rushes through the structures that we've built to keep it out. My boyfriend calls it a cross breeze. I call it inevitable. My roommate calls it nice. Despite the outside air, inside it feels like winter. Many of us are in fact in a mandatory collective hibernation and I am but a bear in her cave with Wi-Fi. An important note about bears. Bears lose a third of their body weight in hibernation, not because they're trying to, but because they die a little. Their heart rate and breathing slows. Their body temperature is ice cold. Their existence is reduced to being. Hibernation is not a time for hunting, production, personal improvement. It is a time for survival. Lately, I've been asking, what do bears believe when they crawl into their caves for the winter? I think the trick is they don't think much at all. They sleep. They wait. They dream. Bam, pow, roar. The bomb exploded. All the snow on the mountain was shaken loose by the explosion. It roared down the mountain, covering the road and a whole lot more. Ranger Smith wasn't sure how he felt, at least for a while. Thanks so much for spending some time with me. Uh, get updates on my work on my website. Wonderful, wonderful. A round of snaps and applause for Alice and Teresa. Oh, I love, I love intergenre uh, hybrid works of this nature. You can tip Alice and Teresa on Venmo at Alice and Teresa. I was especially struck by the line, my boyfriend calls it a cross breeze. I call it inevitable. Woo, that sent shivers up my spine. I haven't Googled if birds are louder these days, but I hear them more often, that's for sure. There's not as much traffic on my road. Well, I am in a train right now though, so let's just get a few things straight. Uh, how is everyone doing? Everybody have enough snacks by them? I have, uh, uh, per the, the chat earlier, I have a little Tostito chip, whoop, whoop, and I'm enjoying those. This is what they call a, a pinch pot. Uh, somebody made this and gave it to me. And I'm very grateful for that. I have more chips, but then I ate them all. So I hope everybody has enough snacks. Now those weren't Dorito chips. 
they were just a simple poor man's Tostitos. But that's all right. We we love Tostitos and, and poor men. Mm, that's just a phrase for the everyday. Anyway, I don't know about you, but I'd certainly love to watch a short video right now, wouldn't you? Oh, what's that? Ooh. My train dispatcher is telling me that we've got exactly that. My friend Scott Adkins will be sure sharing a sharing a short video, a sharing a short video with us, and I, I'm real excited about that. Little bit about Scott. Scott Adkins is a playwright with an MFA from Bro Brooklyn College. How do? Uh, his most recent play is Lakeview Terrace, and his play Tupu 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 was developed at the McDowell Colony in 2016. Well, I love McDowell Colony, and I know everybody on this Twitch has a MacArthur grant, so you must all know about what that is, too. Scott is a wonderful writer. Uh, he's also a playwriting instructor, and uh, I, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for this short video. All aboard! Toot toot! I am Tupu. Snow fell forever. A lot of coats keep me warm. Bring me a flower from a place I've never seen. My eyes are closed. For my destiny, my path is my home. The animals called my name long ago. Now they run in random circles, hoping I am not near. Is the bird the only one to remember? All the places divided for freedom? My path gets shorter and shorter. The snow stops falling. And you'll cue me when this, oh, I see 35 seconds left, but uh, since I, my Twitch, oh, you can't even see it. My Twitch is old time. So you'll give me like a five second countdown. Oh, great, great. Thank you, Mike. Oh, 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 tick, 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 boom. We're, we're live again. Are you alive? I guess I'm alive. Uh, thank you for that wonderful video, Scott. Uh, I, I look forward to watching it on my Twitch later on. It was so short, I didn't even have time to change my train backgrounds. But I, I hope you'll all forgive me for that. Now, we've got a very excellent guest coming up next. Oh, uh, but before, before I even mention that, I just want to say, if you're lucky, you might spot Scott riding around Park Slope on a scooter when he's not riding on a train, that is. Um, and I know Scott has had some wonderful experiences with a local farm doing deliveries uh, uh, to his place with all kinds of fresh produce and uh, other varieties of items. I know Scott had a real haul of artichokes. Uh, so, so ask, maybe Scott can put that in the chat on the Twitch. Um, and if you're lucky enough to live in the Big Apple, you might want to check that out. Uh, I, I've been enjoying Top Box, which is a, a local farm delivery in my region. And say, speaking of food, I had a wonderful chat recently with my friend Oka the other night. Oka is based in Kentucky, 
and knows all about the food industry and nourishment of the belly and nourishment of the soul. So we've got an exciting piece that's going to be interactive with Oka. Please join me in giving Oka a very warm welcome to this family dinner table. All aboard! Toot toot! I think we're all gonna go get a snack now. A glass of wine counts. Hey. All I have near me is water and deodorant. So. <laughs> I have some uh, very basic Allison Roman uh, hashtag the cookies that I'm sharing Ooh, today. Great. <laughs> they're, I wish, no, oh. they're hashtag the cookies if you're familiar with Allison Roman. <laughs> Tea here. <laughs> nice. So this is going to be a little bit different. I just want to take this time and sort of talk to you guys a little bit about food. And um, I'm not a performer the way everybody else is. And I've been loving all of these performances. Um, I know that food has been 
a thing that we've all leaned into in a time. Um, but food has also been something that's hard for us to find in a lot of ways. Um, it's hard to leave the house to go shopping, but if you can even go shopping. Um, I just wanna make sure I turn this stove off. When you live in a rural area, it's hard to get food. A lot of these places are food deserts. Do any of you guys know what a food desert is? Hmm. Yeah. It, it, well, isn't it like when you uh, can't, uh, th people aren't sending food in? Like you're not getting food from farms and stuff like that? A food desert is when all you have is a CVS 30 minute walk away. <laughs> Yeah, you're both right. A food desert is something that is, a food desert is when you live in an area where it's hard to get fresh food. It's hard to get to a grocery store without driving. Um, a lot of y'all I know are in New York City and that's, I, I grew up in Jersey. So um, I know it's easy to sort of just like walk out to a bodega and get some fruit or, go to CVS and get some groceries even. Um, yeah. So we suggest that, that um, when they were living in Jacksonville, Florida, there were about 700 churches and no grocery stores. And honestly, it's a lot like that out here. We've got a church in every corner, sometimes too, but not always a grocery store. The closest grocery store to me, and I live in Louisville now. Oh yeah, that's my cat, that's Henry. Um, is two miles away. So you have to drive. You can't walk. You have to cross. It's hard. And so right now in Eastern Kentucky, things are really hard. Everybody there has to drive, and if you don't drive, you have to rely on rides from other people or walk. And you can't always walk because you live in the mountains, and walking is dangerous. People don't realize that. But there are so many incredible people and artists living out in East Kentucky that people don't realize. Um, that people don't realize are doing some incredible community work, um, and they are places like the Eastern Kentucky. Um, mutual Aid Fund and Stay Appalachia, which is geared towards young queer artists who are from the region who were born there. Um, and all of those people have taught me so much about food and what it means um, to have it. And I just I really, really want to know more really about hard. I really want to know Everybody what your there relationship has to drive. It is like you don't drive. You have to rely on rides from other people or walk. And, and you can't always walk because you I live in the mountains. And walking is dangerous. What people don't realize that. that. But about, there are so many incredible people and artists living out in East Kentucky that people don't realize. Um, that people don't realize are doing some incredible community work. Um, I'm just checking this the chat right now. Um, if you got any thoughts or anything, I'd love to know. Um, just like what your understanding of all of this is and how you guys are doing in all of this, you know? Um, Cause, <laughs> cause that, right now it's a hard time and um, What, so, I don't know, I would love to hear from other people right now. Um, I feel like food for me at the moment is, uh, um, I have a more intense relationship with food. Uh, seems like an interesting time to just be kind of solo in your 
I don't know, food journey, <laughs> uh, making food for yourself all the time and trying to be aware of going to the grocery store, minimizing those trips and I've become more aware of my surroundings and the environment that I'm in food wise. And um, yeah, so things are kind of shifting. I'm noticing things that I hadn't before. Yeah, um, for sure. I'm like, I, I am not really much of a culinary artist. And this has really forced me to confront my fears. So somebody has just said that they're really concerned about food supply chains halting. And that's a very real thing. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the news lately about all of these mass farmers having to throw away milk, throw away eggs, throw away potatoes because there aren't restaurants to buy them right now. But where is that food going? It's going in the trash. And I don't know about you guys, but to me, that's not okay. So many of us are struggling to find milk, eggs, flour, basic necessities. Um, and these supplies are going to dwindle as more people are unable to get out there to bring them to the stores as these essential workers start to get sick in these grocery stores that we all go to and they have to close them. So then what do we do? A practice that, ha that happens here in Kentucky, and it happens everywhere. Every culture preserves food. We all have canned tomatoes. We all pickle things. Um, one of the things that I made tonight was I have a Vietnamese version of kraut. Um, and instead of using cabbage, I use mustard greens. It's a really traditional Vietnamese pickle. And it's something that I and a lot of other chefs and a lot of just our friends in general have been learning to do more to preserve the food that we have. Um, and there's a there's an art to it. There's a you know, it's almost like a performance. You take each step and you are careful and thoughtful about it. And you want your end product not just to be delicious, but you want it to be beautiful. Um, and a thing that people don't realize, part of the reason that I am so invested in Appalachia as somebody who grew up in the Northeast is because there's so much translation into Appalachian culture that is found in everything else, just like something as simple as a piece of kraut. Um, the Koreans have kimchi. Japan has thousands of types of pickles. Vietnam has these mustard green kraut pickles. And things that people are into now, like baking sourdough, is a process that is exactly related <laughs> to the process of making these sour pickles, it's lacto-fermentation. And I love the way that all these traditions are coming back to life with our generation. Because the people out here know that the food supply can be tight, it can be limited, and it's important to grow your own food, it's important to know how to preserve your food, and it's important to know how to survive in a way that is still beautiful and makes you happy. It does, even when you're struggling, it doesn't have to suck. You know, you can find joy in like something as delicious as a pickle and it's so simple or a beautiful loaf of bread and the support that you get from your community. One person makes a lot of kraut, another person bakes a lot of bread. You trade, you support each other. You make sure that everybody gets through this together. The way that we're doing this now, the way that this stream, this performance, this act every week brings us all together and gives us something to bond about and some, a way to be together all over the country. It's amazing. To me, it's, it's amazing the way that we can all connect with each other through this and support each other. And to make sure everybody gets fed, like, I don't know, I just find that kind of thing really amazing. And when you set when you step back and have a look at it, it becomes this massive cultural performance because every moving part matters, you know. Without every person involved, none of it would function. Does that make sense? Yeah.
Yeah, I made, it was my mom's birthday, um, or Lauren and my mom's birthday, because we're related. Um, but, uh, and I decided to make her an apple crumble at, instead of, like, a cake or anything. But I made, like, a apple crumble that you would make for a party, you know, that size. So we had it for, like, a week straight, where it was just all dessert was apple crumble because we didn't have anyone to give it out to so we just had to eat it all or else it would go bad <laughs> my friends at the cane kitchen in eastern kentucky have been feeding everybody um since i, I don't know if y'all got hit by a storm last week but here in Kentucky, we got hit by a really bad storm. Um, and somehow there was a tornado out in the mountains and it wiped out half of the marina in our county, um, took out a lot of homes. A lot of people didn't have power or running water for almost a week on top of not being able to get food and not having drinkable water on a day-to-day -day basis already. And so having an abundance of food like that, that we had in our houses, a lot of my friends did door drops to other neighbors, even neighbors they don't get over. It's like, I have this extra let you video that helps you. Um, and let me, let us get each other through this. Um, and I think it's amazing that you guys were able to make this cake for your mom. Um, a lot of my friends have had birthdays in the past week too, and we've done virtual birthday parties where we all made cupcakes or whatever and like ate cake together over Zoom. Like, um, yeah, I love that kind of thing. Do you guys have any questions? Honestly, I would really, I mean, what I really wanted to do was be able to just tell you real quick about the programs that I'm supporting. Um, I know it's not, I know I haven't like performed anything for you guys the way everybody else has, but what I really want to do is like generate a conversation that hopefully you guys continue to have afterwards. The food security that you have, even if it feels tenuous out in the East Coast or in a, any other city that you might be in right now, um, isn't something that is available in Eastern Kentucky. And these are these people are folks that um, are kind of forgotten in a lot of ways. Our economy has been built upon their back in a lot of ways. Our modern um, economy from coal and gas, there's, it's all extractive. Um, economics and these are folks that are in the middle of what we call Trump country but they continue to feed the rest of us to provide power for the rest of us and what folks don't realize is there's such a wealth out there of people doing work for on shoestring budgets and so I just want to bring a little attention to this is like um, like Stay, which like I said before, is focused on empowering young queer artists who are people of color from the region, and not necessarily all people of color, but just young queer artists um, in Appalachia. Places like the Kane Kitchen in Letcher County, White, um, particularly Whitesburg of Eastern Kentucky, they are bringing healthy food and farmers together and feeding the entire communities for free. Um, the East Kentucky Mutual Aid Fund is run by a bunch of radical queer anarchist babies in East Kentucky, which you guys wouldn't think are out there, but there's so many of us. There's so many incredible politically engaged. There's a diamond queer. in every rough if you look. Exactly. There's a diamond in there's a diamond in this coal field somewhere. And actually there's quite a lot of them. Um and so if you guys could take some time 
while you're thinking about your food, have a look at who these people are and the work that they're doing. And instead of tipping me, could you please support them so that we can all get through this together? Wonderful. Agre I couldn't agree with you more. And I think what you've done so beautifully, Oka, is start a conversation, you know? Well, this is a, the, the, the tip of the conversation, but we have to continue to converse with each other across our different time zones. I'm in a train. But I, I think if people, can, how can people reach out to you? Will you tell us about that? How to, how to get in touch and, and support? Absolutely. You can find me on all social media. Um, my Instagram is Atomic Kitties. Um, and if you would like to reach out to me on Facebook, you can just find me underneath my name. And I'm happy to talk with y'all more about all these incredible people and all these incredible projects that are happening. Um, and if you would like to send me a tip for whatever, please send it to the Out of Caution PayPal so that we can evenly distribute the funds to all of these incredible community organizations that are trying to support us and everywhere else, everyone else as well. Marvelous, marvelous. Exactly what Oka said. Thank you so much for this round table discussion. I certainly enjoyed having a, a beverage by my side and I know everybody else liked to be able to stretch their legs and hear about how we can be better involved in these issues that impact everybody, particularly vulnerable populations. Uh, I'm very, thank you again, Oka, and everybody who was part of this conversation. Uh, uh, and as Oka said, find, find them on Atomic Kitties on the, uh, on the Instagram. <laughs> Personally, I'm a dog man myself, but I don't discriminate when it comes to furry friends, uh, when it comes to a cuddle or a cute little tip. How do? Uh, now before, whoop. I have to change my train. Whoop. There, there I go. Whoop. Here I here I am. Now I'm in a new train, everybody. Okie doke. Well, uh, we have one more guest, and that is the inimitable Maya Sharp, who is going to be showing us a forest nymph and a weeping willow, which, as we all know, is the most melancholy of the trees out there. Anyway, uh I love a melancholy tree. I love a final act. I can't wait to, to enjoy what Maya Sharp will be bringing to us from, from twitch to, tw to twinge. Ooh, my eyeballs twitching. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for Maya Sharp. All aboard. Toot toot.
red, red. She goes, I believe in me till I'm dead today. Come and look at me, I'll take your do 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 dread. Oh, cut my hands and drink your sorrow. Heart keeps on 
forgiving But I can't remember my name It's all you are killing Today I wish it were like yesterday too precious to keep around my bed Waiting until the end I'm never Look now, the sun is there and coming near Saving the light he found Maya Sharp, marvelous, just marvelous. Oh, what, a, what an evening of performances we've had. I'm truly overwhelmed. Uh, that was just sensational. You can tip and follow Maya at Miss Maya B, B-E-E, -E, like a buzz, 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 B that stings you, stings you with wonderful tunes, that is. Or also you can find Maya Sharp on Venmo, at, with the name Maya Sharp. And of course, uh, I, I'm sure our friends at Out of Caution will be putting the little PayPal. Uh, you can, you can, so many places to tip. I know it can be overwhelming. So long as you just keep, in, keep reaching into your pockets, that'll be fine by us. We love, um, we love all the tips. Why, why, thank you for the, for the compliment on my outfit that it's, that's very nice of you. It's not an outfit like we started with this evening, but just a simple indoor 
outfit. Um, the sweater is sustainably sourced from a company called Everlane. And is it sustainable if something is a hand-me-down? Because that's what this shirt is. My sibling told me, you can't wear that t-shirt in winter because it's a summer shirt, but non ci sono più i mezzi stagioni. There are no longer the middle seasons, like we learned earlier. Um, I, I feel pretty good about tonight, unless anybody else has some pressing questions about Doritos, anchovies, which I do eat, just not on a train. Uh, I think we can wrap it up. Otherwise, uh, we, uh, 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 I just want to say thank you for riding the Twitch train with me. And also uh, a quick little uh, bit of house, virtual housekeeping. Get out your broom, because we've got a little tiny housekeeping. And that's that um, we will, whoop, we will be here uh, in subsequent Sundays, basically until this pan damn pandemic ends. Who even knows? So uh, Maya Sharp, by the way, also made those visual, incredible visual uh, videos that accompanied um, the music. So thank you for those visuals. We'll be here next week, every Sunday on Twitch. And... Um, um, so, Oh, yes, Jess Almazy is giving more thanks on the chat uh and and so many thank you thank yous to, to all of the wonderful artists tonight uh oh why thank you for the train i love a train ride but i uh every every sunday at seven doors at seven and then we start at 8 p.m as you can see i'm now on a train of the future and the future looks bright. So hopefully we'll get the, uh, we'll have some sunshine in the future. Thank you everybody for a wonderful evening. You, you stay safe. Keep having some good snacks. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.